enjoyed about the course was uh, the fact that I've seen a, a real scientist slash businessman. Many of the students, um, they see their future as being professors. And that's not going to be possible for everybody. They're, they need to do other things. And one of the things which people who've done this course are well trained to do would be to set up their own business. And it's a course on how to do that that I'm giving. He got into business from academics. I think I, I can take up this idea and make useful uh, things with my research. For scientists and mathematicians, it is easier to set up businesses because they are doing things that can be turned into companies uh, more easily. And although universities, uh, their job is to teach and do research, this third leg of commercializing the research is becoming increasingly important. I mean, governments like it because it brings in money. The universities like it because it uh, brings money into them. But the students also, it gives them opportun new opportunities. And in many, all parts of the world, but particularly in Africa, in South Africa, one of the real needs are jobs for people. So creating new companies, new industries, is a way of creating employment. So this is something that universities can do. And the people who do this course at Ames are just the sort of people uh, to make these sorts of advances. You need a kind of uh, experienced person like Grams to give the talk. I enjoyed listening to him, uh, telling the stories where, where he built this company and he sold it over winter and all of this. Uh, I spent a boring career in a sense and I was a student in Oxford, I did a PhD in Oxford, I was put on the faculty, rose through the ranks and became <coughs> head of the chemistry department in Oxford. So I was a full-time academic scientist. The link with Ames, although I'm a chemist by trade, I'm a theoretical chemist and I do it all on a computer so there is a mathematical content. But I slightly shifted my uh, emphasis uh, in perhaps a uh, surprising way, in 1988, my then wife, who was a South African from this part of the world, she died, and leaving me with two children, which was obviously a pretty uh, difficult situation to be in, and different people have different ways of coping with uh, uh, that sort of difficulty. And in my case, uh, what I needed to do was to, to work more, uh, not sit around and mope at home, but to do something. And so the day after her funeral, I rang up one of my former students, who was one of nature's natural entrepreneurs, and said, Tony, you know that company we've talked about for years? Let's bloody well do it. And so we founded a company which was called Oxford Molecular, which uh, created software for the pharmaceutical industry. And so we started that company. We started with 350,000 pounds worth of venture capital uh, in 1989. We uh, floated on the London stock market in 1992. We sold a third of the shares for 10 million pounds, which that then valued the company at 30 million. We took it up to be worth 450 million, so it was quite a big success. And then we screwed it up and uh, ended up selling it for 70 million. But nonetheless, if you start with 350,000 and go up to 70 million, it was quite successful. So I did it once myself, and then I got involved in doing this, um, I helped create the Technology Transfer Office in Oxford, which has created a lot of companies. But in particular, in, uh, at the end of the 90s, I, I became head of the chemistry department. I had to build a big new laboratory, and I had to raise 64 million pounds. And I got quite a lot of that from various charities, but I was still quite a lot short. And I managed to do a deal with a City of London bank, whereby they gave me 20 million pounds up front, but not as a gift, but as a deal, whereby if we created spin-out companies out of my laboratory for 15 years, they would get half of the university's equity, half the shares in these companies. And that 15 years is just up now, and it's been a big success for both sides. 
I mean, out of that one department, <coughs> we've created 20, more than 20 companies. Uh, five of them have become public companies, uh, some of them quite valuable. And the bank with whom I did the deal were bought by another bank, so they set up a company uh, to do this, not just in one department, in one university, but in Britain across all universities. And this company is called IP Group, uh, which is now a publicly quoted company in London. It's one of the 250 biggest companies in the UK with a market capitalization of more than a billion pounds. So um, this thing is happening worldwide and there are real opportunities in all of Africa, in South Africa, and the students on the Ames course are just the sort of people to have the talent and the um, ideas which can create companies, creates money, creates jobs. So in the end, it's good for everybody. I always had dreams, and I thought that having a master and PhD means that you go directly to academia, and you didn't have a chance to do business. But uh, Professor Graham proved to us that um, even if you were a professor at university, you can do business in, um, in, a, very good, in a very successful way. What I hope that they will get from my course uh, are some hints as to how to do it, uh, some <coughs> case studies, uh, and this is one of the best ways of learning these things, to see what has been done. The story, my Oxford molecular story, um, I hope, without being uh, too arrogant, is to some extent inspirational, because they can see that one academic and a student can come together and create something quite big. So it, I hope it shows them what is possible and uh, ideally how to go about it, including some of the technical things like uh, the importance of patents, having non-disclosure agreements, and all the rather technical things which are involved in setting up new companies. You know, we can't all go in academic line. And uh, there are some of us that even initially we have business in mind. So it was a kind of eye-opener.